Hello guys, welcome back to another video. In this one, we're looking at the Creative Sound Blaster Katana customizable high-res gaming under monitor audio system. That's a bit of a mouthful. Let's just call it an under monitor gaming soundbar. So there's a lot going on with this soundbar. So I'm gonna run through the specs now and then kind of give you a bit more of a detailed look at individual parts as we go throughout the video. So this is 59 centimeters or 24 inches in length. So the soundbar has a multi-core DSP with a 24-bit high resolution DAC. It also implements Blaster X acoustic engine and double digital 5.1 decoder. It has a five driver system with a triamplified design where they all get individual power from the DSP controlled amplifiers. This allows it to try and deliver ultra precise audio for each part of the audio spectrum. You also got Aurora reactive lighting system which consists of 49 programmable LEDs from edge to edge of the katana. 2017 seems to be the year of RGB. Some people might find it a bit cheesy and a bit gimmicky but I think for this it actually really works nicely. You can do virtual 7.1 if you're using it on PC as well. You've got a maximum output of 75 watts RMS. Now for connectivity you've got options to connect wirelessly via Bluetooth. And then for your inputs you can use a 3.5mm auxiliary, optical audio, USB and a micro USB. So in terms of a gaming soundbar, there's only really a few people that this would maybe appeal to. Somebody that's got a lot of desk space isn't going to need something as compact as this because obviously they've got room for speakers like I generally use. And gaming soundbars aren't something that we generally see on the market anyway. The last notable one was the Razer Leviathan and even that's quite a few years old now. So it's nice to see a bit of a refresh. So we'll take a look around the Katana and I'll give you my thoughts about it in the conclusion. So as you may have seen on the box, it's got the Northern Lights, which I think is really nice. I've never seen the Northern Lights on a box, so that was something that I liked immediately there. I think that's there to show a kind of representation of what the RGB can do. There are some cool effects like that actually on there, so I'll show you those later. First of all, let's get into the box and show you what's included. Now the first thing you'll actually take out is the soundbar itself, but obviously I'll put that to the side to show you in a minute. So included in the box, we've got our power adapter, three different power leads for different countries, a longer micro USB cable and a shorter one, obviously great depending on whatever scenario you're setting it up and if you want to kind of cable manage a little bit. Two brackets if you want to wall mount this, that's something you can do with this which is nice. A small remote control and then your user manuals. So for a basic quick setup all you're really going to need is the power adapter, the correct power plug for the country you're in and then just a micro USB cable. I'm using the long one as I like to route the cables through the back of my desk but obviously your scenario may be different. So before we get onto the soundbar let's have a look at the subwoofer. This subdriver is using a long throw driver and what I found that it does produce bass really quite far back in the room. Now the fact they market this to be a bit of a smaller setup for sound so you, know, you get more detail up close. You need to just bear in mind that it does produce a lot of bass so what you're hearing up close may not be what you actually hear further back so it does go a lot louder than you may think to begin with. So something you just need to bear in mind especially when you play at high levels. We've got an air outlet on the front and then the speaker on the left hand side. It uses a hardwired cable that plugs into the back of the soundbar directly. Ideally I'd like this to be wireless even though it probably would put a bit more of a price premium on there. This is purely for the fact obviously it gives you a lot more flexibility in where you position it and the fact that the long throw driver is there. Personally I'd position it at the other side of the room opposite me so then the bass hits me from behind. I think that would just be nice to get the most out of the subwoofer especially because there's such a difference between up close and further away. Also on the bottom of the subwoofer there's some pads if you're going to put it on a hardwood floor. Onto the soundbar itself, it looks a lot bigger I think in the video than it does in person but as I said it does measure 59 centimeters or just under 24 inches. Got a lovely brushed metal look on the top, it's actually plastic but it looks metal. Then on the very top we've got the power button which also doubles the Bluetooth pairing when you hold it down. A minus and plus for volume, a source button to change obviously what input you're using. Then the SBX changes the different preset sounds that are built in. You've also got an LED readout on the front as well so you can tell what source you're using and then also the sound mode. There's a little LED for power on there as well. So at the very ends of the Katana, it's a bit difficult to see on camera, but you've got the two high excursion tweeters. And then on the very top, you've got the two up firing middle bass drivers. Also touching on the styling here, you can see the edge of the Katana it goes into the very similar design that the sword would have. I actually really like the styling on this. I think it definitely does look nice on your desk. And then when I show you the lights as well, it looks even better. This is a little gift that's on the creative website. I just wanted to throw in. I just thought it was really cool. Nice exploded view of the actual Katana itself. And you can see all the parts inside. Just something I thought was pretty nifty, so I thought I'd chuck it in. So on the underside of the soundbar, we've got two rubber pads that are slightly angled, which is obviously going to help it grip on the surface and also make it face towards you a little bit more. Then you've also got the 49 Aura LED strip that runs along the entirety of the Katana. We'll get onto the presets and what you can do with that a little bit further in the video. So behind on the soundbar, we've got all our ins and outs. First of all, we've got the power adapter in, then the subwoofer connection, 
microphone if you want to go for an external route which is always a great option especially during gameplay headphones out for late night playing a 3.5 millimeter jack in an optical in then you've got a usb flash drive and then finally a micro usb for your computer now personally for me i found that this wasn't high enough to actually sit over my monitor stand so this is something you might want to bear in mind as you can see obviously the katana is not on its actual stands the base of my monitor stand is probably about 15 millimeters so just something to take into account there but being that I use two monitors anyway, I just spread them across the stands. And I actually think that looks pretty good as well. Definitely better than just having it over one. And it also helps as well being in a central position for listening. Obviously, if your monitors are mounted on arms, that won't matter anyway. So firstly, taking a look at the preset modes. Obviously, on the front of the soundbar, it shows you what mode you're in, which is always good. They've all got a different lighting preset, but you can change that inside the software. Personally, for me, there's a couple there that I'll change anyway, so I just find them a bit distracting. So it is nice to have that flexibility available. This is the equivalent to the Northern Lights that I mentioned at the start of the video. Personally, my favourite effect that the soundbar offers. Nice and convenient volume options on there as well. If you use this on your PC, then any volume change you do on the soundbar will change your PC in an increment of two, either up or down. So just bear that in mind, as sometimes you may find yourself making yourself jump if you turn it up too far on your PC. You can go through the different inputs on the soundbar by just pressing the source button on the very top. And if you're using it on your PC, then you've got full control of everything else on the software anyway. It does come with a remote control if you want to go that way about it but personally to me it feels a bit cheaply made i think it could have done a better job with it and to be frank i think it's something you're going to leave in the box so let's look at the sound blaster connect software this is the standard lighting options that you get included some of them you can't actually change obviously unless you use the software itself so i always recommend using the software with any rgb product it makes it so much more customizable so as you can see here going through a few of the different presets what i really like about this is you can change the speed of the effects the way that they go even changing the colors and things like that i think that's really quite nice you could even go for a flash as well and mix it to the same BPM that your music is. So for example, Trance 128 BPM, that's something you can do. That did make me smile when I saw that. So definitely something you can have a good play about with and get something custom. So even if you have maybe flashing for when you play your music or you know something a bit more tranquil for gaming, loads of different options out there for you to have a go with. So in terms of the sound customization you've got on the Cortana, you've got a full spectrum, which I think is really good to have. There are presets on there as well, but personally for me, first thing that me and a friend noticed when we looked at this was the mids were really quite lacking. So something that I bumped up immediately when I was testing it myself. I did find myself turning down the bass as well, because as I mentioned, that long throw driver put a lot more bass behind me than I actually was anticipating. But definitely something to try out for yourself and to see how it's affected in your room there. So in the acoustic engine settings, you've got options for the immersion. So to kind of create a more virtual sound experience around you. Vocalizer, which is intended to make the music as good as the artist wanted it to be. Definitely something you don't want to go too mad with though, because otherwise it sounds a little bit artificial. Smart volume kind of equalizes things a little bit better. So if you're playing a bit later at night, this would be great. So you don't get sudden spikes in volume. And then dialogue just helps out bring out vocals. Then on the final tab, we've got the options for the Dolby Digital Decoder. This converts from analog sound from an optical source into 5.1 configurations up to 24 bit at 96 kilohertz. Then you've got settings to control how much you want of that as well. There are options for player custom presets as well. That's quite a cool thing for different games. But one downside I've found for the software is it's pretty damn buggy. Pretty much every time that I loaded the software, then turn the soundbar on, it would just crash each time. So quite annoying, but hopefully something they can fix with an update. Okay, so that's the software portion that covered for the video. Now I just want to go over a few additional features that the soundbar offers, a few thoughts I've got, and then we'll get onto the sound. Now, because this has got a built-in DAC, you can actually do 24-bit, 96Hz lossless playback via the USB or optical port. That includes streaming back in FLAC and WAV audio files, so you can get some really impressive sound and detailing out of this. Then again, you can also use it for just your phone or Bluetooth, and it does an okay job for that as well. So going over sound, obviously I said my initial impressions were that the mids were very low and sounded quite hollow. That I feel was something that you can adjust to a certain degree, uh, but just purely because of the size of the speakers in the soundbar, you're going to be slightly limited to how much you can get out of it in that regard. For example, going from my desktop speakers that use, I believe, 5 inch speakers and then a high end tweeter to this, you can tell a drastic difference between the mid range on them. Obviously, after a period of time, you do adjust to how the soundbar would sound and then you get used to it. But just flicking between my speakers and then the soundbar just shows for me that there is a distinct lack of mid-range there. One thing that is very apparent to the soundbar is just the volume. When I first installed the soundbar software on my PC, then it went over onto 20 volume. That scared the living life out of me. It's got so much punch and a heavy amount of bass to go with it as well. 
I had to make sure the sound bar was on about half of what my speakers were, so it's definitely putting a lot of power through it. Then going back to the bass, there's just a massive bass kick as well. I couldn't use anything on the standard bass ranges. I always had to keep it down low. That's just because it's absolutely booming and that long range driver just definitely throws it about the room very well, but sometimes it's a bit too much. Treble and high range though, I do feel is very good. You can definitely pick out nice tonal differences in the soundtracks you play compared to when I listen to them on my speaker. So it is at an advantage with the high end. The Virtual 7.1 I think works as well as you can expect. Obviously you don't have speakers behind you, so it's slightly limited to how well it can perform there. I looked at another soundbar before and that had a similar feature, but that again struggled as well. So I think it's just a soundbar thing. It's just not something that can be done extremely well. So to go with the bass and then the nice treble, you have also got the LEDs, of course, the 49 that go across the length of the soundbar. I really love the LED effects on this. This is probably my favourite RGB thing I've looked at this year. And being that 2017 has been the year of RGB, this is definitely my favourite application of it so far. I think the aura effect has got to be my favourite. Just a nice little bit of change in colour every now and again. It's very relaxing and nice to have some ambient lighting. And then obviously if you want to go absolutely nuts with it, you also got that option there as well. A couple of little alterations I think will just improve this a little bit more is having a longer cable for the subwoofer. And some people like to be very precise on the cable management and two meters just isn't enough for that. Obviously you could use an extension, but I think it would be also nice to have a dedicated speaker in on the subwoofer as well. So you can use a different cable totally rather than using extensions. I know a few people that don't like extensions either because you obviously got that bulk in the center of the cable. Whereas if you can change the cable entirely, you can keep it all nice and neat. Another thing for the people that want to keep things nice and neat and tidy is the fact you need to go for a power into the soundbar before you can then go back down to the subwoofer. That's more of a neatest thing again because obviously you've got two cables there where you just have to use one if you went from the power into the subwoofer then up to the soundbar. Just a different way it could be done to keep down on cables. Then the only other issue I can really think of is the remote control which just feels too cheap and plasticky. I would like to see them put a bit more time and effort into that as it definitely feels like something you're going to just leave in the box and forget about. Especially because of the fact I feel this is designed more for a desk scenario. You're going to be sat pretty close to it most of the time anyway unless maybe you're using it via bluetooth or something like that. Then obviously the remote might come in handy there but the majority of the time you'll just be close to it anyway. So it's currently priced at £240 on Amazon which I think is a tad expensive but we need to bear in mind the fact that they made it for a smaller setup anyway. The best way I can really put this down is if you've got space to use speakers get some desktop speakers. If you don't this is a good second option. I do love the appearance of it though and the RGB is really fantastic so they're definitely two pros for it. So I do hope we see a second version just with some little improvements then it's going to be a solid product. So thank you for watching this video guys, I hope you enjoyed it. If you have any more questions, please let me know in the comments box below and I'll get back to you as soon as I can. If you fancy getting one of these soundbars, I will put the link in the description box for you. Follow me on Instagram and Twitter for the latest updates on what I'm going to be uploading next. If you haven't already subscribed, do it! Thank you for watching, thank you for creative setting this out for me to review, and I'll see you all in the next one.